country life. You knew how to pick your country and uh, to live the good life. How's that for a country house thrusting into the azure lake of Garda? No doubt a, a shipping millionaire or a successful company promoter or much the same thing the ex-governor of a fat province lived there in cautious retirement if he escaped prosecution for extortion and corruption. Here again, beneath the hills of Tivoli near Rome, where the Emperor Hadrian, who planned our austere frontier wall, built a huge, splendacious villa for himself across a mile of countryside. But cultivated country life was by no means a Mediterranean monopoly. I have in mind a little Roman house tucked away in one of the lovely valleys of Kent at Lullingston. Their knowledgeable country squires lived for three of the centuries of Roman Britain. Memories of the poet Virgil went to the making of their mosaic floors. Their tables were furnished with elegant simplicity. They drank new wine in new bottles and blessed them were fond of dogs and therefore gentlemen. And they had their hunting and their table games. A game of checkers went into a squire's grave close to where he'd lived and grumbled and gambled. It is all a checkerboard of nights and days where destiny with men for pieces plays. Towards the end of the empire, the proprietor was a Christian who turned one of his rooms into a chapel. Praying figures were painted on its walls. And beside them was a sacred monogram of Christ. The Roman Empire was full of these gracious establishments, of which uh, Jane Austen would have approved fully. Inside them, family life proceeded on a well-ordered pattern. It would scarcely be an exaggeration to say that the Romans invented home life in our sense of the term. When we look at their serious faces, full of individual character, full of that gravity and responsibility of which they were inclined to boast a little, we can think of these Roman family men sitting on the next seat on a bus or at a shareholder's meeting in the city. And then there were those splendid Roman women, pursued by uh, cynical historians. They've had a bad press, but in truth, in a predominantly masculine society, they show up remarkably well and much of the stability of ancient Roman life is owed to them. 